Hey folks, welcome back. So last week I made a video about Open Door, which was pretty successful in terms of views, but I also had a lot of comments, suspicious comments, and also a lot of feature requests, implement this, implement that, and so on, right? The usual stuff. And I want to answer some of the questions from my perspective, because I'm not a developer, I'm just backing this, I'm behind the project. I want to make a bit of, you know, advertisement for free. Um, and I want to give you also some updates about Open Door because we have new features already. It's just been a week and we have new features. I mean, it's pretty, it's moving fast. Um, if you want to, you can also attend today in Discord a meeting with the developer Andre and ask questions for yourself or ask questions to me or to the other backers. Just join the Discord, the link is in the description below. Make sure your webcam is working, make sure your microphone is working and just ask some questions and feel the vibe of the community. Um, so the biggest concern with Open Door under my last video was actually, oh, this is uh, a cloud service, right? You need to pay money for this, which is not the case. At some point you can have a cloud service because you need to have a cloud service in terms of uh, you want to share your project. So let's say you make music and you have WAV files in there and you want to share this with your friend or with your family. You want to just pass some kind of URL around. So the, the WAV files or the contents need to be in the cloud or on some kind of server, right? So there needs to be at some point a cloud service, but only if you want to use this kind of feature. There will be also um, something like um, PVA. A PVA, maybe you know this already, it's some kind of web standard which means you can use websites offline. So you go to a website, to an URL, opendoor.studio, open and then you say, I want to use this offline. You click this button and then it downloads all the resources, JavaScript files, media files, audio engine, everything you need to execute or to run this application. And then it's stored basically to your local storage. That's, that's how the name is uh, from your browser. It's not temporary, but it's a special place, a sandbox more or less from the browser that you can access then offline, which means you can cut the Wi-Fi, cut the access to the internet, go to the URL in the browser and you will see open door and you can use the application. That's actually what PVA means, progressive web application. Also at some point, that's the plan at least, uh, you can download a binary, which means there's an electron or Tauri wrapper. It's more or less like a browser inside of a small binary. And then there's open door in there. So you can download a binary, just your, your normal native door. You download basically also open door and you can use it on your local PC normally. But sometimes you don't want to actually download anything because you want to use the iPad which has a browser and you want to use the browser to access open door. So open door or the application needs to be on some kind of server, right? So this is the good thing. You can access then probably open door.studio from the website of Andre, or you can download the application and host it for yourself on your own domain. Maybe you have a course, maybe you have a school and you want to teach some kids making music, right? So you want to host this maybe in, on a different server and you want to change the permissions. What can, what are the kids up, able to upload, right? What are the permissions? What can people store? What can people delete or change and so on? So there will be a self-hosted component or you can self-host the thing. So. Yes, you have a URL at the moment, a domain you can access open door on, but you can also use PVA, download everything to your local storage of the browser. You can download this then as a binary in an Electron or Tauri wrapper, just like you, any other application. You don't need to have access to the internet also with this. Uh, and you can also self-host. So you put this on your own domain and, you know, give only your family members access or your class access. Pretty dope actually. It will be also open source, so you can download the source code, make changes to it, make a fork, make completely add features, remove features, whatever you want, open source. At the moment, it's not open source. 
it's just closed source at the moment, but it will be within this year that Andre will uh, open source this. But he wants, he wants to lay out the foundation. He wants to make the groundwork, basically the basement. So, and then when this is finished, he wants to open this uh, or make this open to everyone. Um, so the goal is at least what I know and what I communicated with Andre is that um, it will be as open as possible. Um, he and that's also my my own uh, kind of direction. I don't want to make money from all of this. We just want to have good tools out there. You know me, um, I'm putting out these controller scripts uh, in the last weeks and I don't want to have any money. It's also not behind the paywall with my Patreon. I talk to my patrons uh, lately and they all want to have the stuff open. So in my opinion, this knowledge and all that stuff needs to be as open as possible. And um, also with the store, I want to have some kind of digital audio workstation as open as possible. And this also means not only you have access to the source code, but you have also access to the application on any platform. Let's open up your smartphone, right? And go to the URL and use the store. Let's go to your iPad and use the door. Let's go to your old laptop and use the door. Um, this would be something I really like. And that's why I'm behind this project and why I like this project and why I'm okay with having this inside of the browser. Which brings me to the second point people have, oh, the latency. Oh, there's actually, you know, it's not maybe timing issues. That's not the point. It's not a door that you use for um, your next life or stage or performance. Um, it's more like something where you want to have fun in you want to make a bit of electronic music, maybe in the free time, maybe at your work, you know, maybe in the classroom. So it's more like for that. It's not like something you want to use for as a performance tool where timing is crucial or you don't want to record your band in this, right? Or um, there are other tools. So I don't get this point. Most people want to have in every door every other feature. So they come to Bitwig, right? And they want to have all the features of uh, Reaper. They want to have all the features of uh, FL Studio. They want to have all the features of Ableton Live, everything in Bitwig. And everything that what Bitwig has needs to be enabled in Live and also in Reaper, right? And then we have 15 different doors that all make the same things in different ways. And in my opinion, it's completely fine to have a door that is hyper-focused on a special thing. Teaching, to be open, to be accessible. Why not have that? I'm completely fine with this. And if I need to make some compromises there in terms of latency, I have no problems. I don't need to play this latency free. You know, um, I just want to make a bit of electronic music in the browser. Why not? So um, these are, I think, these were the biggest concerns. Some people said, oh, actually Reaper is free because I said um, it's time for a free open source DAW, right? And all these projects have some kind of, you know, things here and there. So Reaper is not free, even though you can click on this small little window, you know, evaluate continuously forever. Um, there is even a small little um, hint there in this box, which says, Reaper is not free. It's not free. You need to pay for it. There's a license in there. And even though you can click this small little window forever, it doesn't mean it's free. So um, Reaper is not free. Sorry. It's, it's, it, that's how it is. I can't change it. Um, okay. So these were the biggest concerns. I want to give you here a small update over the new features in OpenDoor. So let's follow me here to uh, uh, the URL of OpenDoor. So let's take a look at the Open Door Discord first with the new updates channel here. It gives you all the latest features that are implemented in Open Door uh, inside of a channel. So the first one is already interesting project bundles. You can now export all your projects into a single file. Uh, it's almost like a zip file, but here it's called ODB, Old Dirty Bastard. It's a very common open source format for exchanging projects. I hope they also implement DAW project um, so we can then import it to Cubase and Bitwig and Studio One and so on. 
Um, the second one is sample import here. So you can now import wave samples and they are not uploaded. Samples will be copied into the OPFS, which is, I guess it stands for open file system um, in the browser. So it's basically a sandbox inside of the browser and you store it in there and it's only accessible from this URL. So it's a, a local thing. So you can import, so you can drag and drop files into open door and can use then the samples. Also here with auto detected BPM and so on. Accepting more audio formats soon. Um, yeah, we have then a switch in the sample browser. I show you this in a minute. We can also import multiple samples at once. Um, simple MIDI export. You can export MIDI files here with a right click. Pretty dope. Um, you can create multi, multi tracks from stems. You can now select multiple samples from the sample browser to either delete them in one go or create an audio track for each sample with an individual tape device. Also nice. Um, and we have here an update with the automation clips. So you can um, let's play this. You can see we have your automation basically in a loop and this one changes some settings here on this synth at the top and yeah these are kind of short loops and you get these nice modulations with this so yeah nice this uh, sounds already pretty dope so let's go to the browser here and go to opendoor.studio um, and make this bigger. And you probably get here some kind of pop-up that says something like, uh, please allow the browser to access your local storage and you just hit yes or allow or whatever. And then the browser is able to access your open file system. So we hit then new here. And then you can see under samples, we have still here the online samples available and then we have to switch here to local stored samples and here we can just um, drag something in i don't know um maybe the sample you know you drag it in you have a bbm detection and then it shows up here on the left side we can also edit here the meta files or the meta data we can say that oh this is not 140 bpm this is maybe 120 bpm right so we can save this and then it has influence on how it's been played back let's say uh this is maybe 20 bpm right and you have a different pitch then because it tries to play it faster um but that's wrong so let's go back to 130 then drag it in kind of works right um we can also can i delete this here delete track yeah so i can hit this one and use my shift key and then click the last one and then I can right click and create audio tracks and then it brings in all the samples at once. And so this kind of also works nicely. Um, delete, delete, delete. Um, let's try out here the clips. So I want to go in and I want to add an audio effect. I want to use here an EQ and I want to use a low us here and i want to automate this so i create an automation from this and here i create a new clip let's go in this clip and let's say i want to modulate this over three sixteen nodes it's a bit shorter something like this let's hit play So this works kind of neatly. Um, let's make it a bit longer. And then just loop this.
yeah, neat feature. I already like it. So it's so straightforward. You have automation tracks here and you can put uh, some clips on there with very short lengths and you get interesting results from this. It almost makes um, modulators obsolete in a kind of way. Um, so then we have here some things for importing samples. You can import multiple samples at once. So let's say you want to import 100 samples instead of just one sample after the other. You can do this here with multiple samples. You can export uh, audio. Um, you can bundle, import and export to this uh, ODB format at the moment. And what else? I think when you save this here, you can say ODB test. It's also stored locally. You can also see down here in the info box how the project is called. And when you click open, you get this kind of overview here with all your projects. And all these projects are local. They are not uploaded. They are not online. Um, yeah. So he tries to go offline first with this. And I really like it. And these are all the new features in Open DAW. So you can now use your own samples, which is pretty dope. Try it out. And if you find some bugs, please report it inside of Discord in the dedicated channel and try to attend today the Discord meeting and ask your questions. Okay. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and let me know what you think in the comments down below. See ya.